year was 1917. The place, just outside the private residence of a cabinet member of the United States government in Washington, D.C. Charles Elton, if that really was his name, chose to make an appearance here in a most unorthodox manner. But then he proved to be a most unorthodox individual. Your office, Mr. Secretary? No, there's a meeting at the State Department, 845. It's nearly that now, but let's not break any cross-town speed records. No, sir. I'm afraid you won't be able to leave just yet, Mr. Secretary. Who are you and what do you want? Just to show the Secretary something of great importance. Well, you'd better get out of here fast. Sir, you have a reputation for being a reasonable man. I'm sure you can see if you will notice this car is in no condition to take you anywhere. So you might as well let me fix it. Fix it? There isn't a gasoline station around for at least a mile. Which is precisely why I chose to empty your gasoline tank here. Mr. Secretary, please forgive my methods. But after waiting in your outer office four days in vain... There may be enough gasoline in the lines to get to a gas station. Carter, you'd best go and telephone for a taxi cab. Maybe I'd better call the police. No, I'd be all right. Yes, sir. I thought your face was familiar. Excuse me, sir. Where are you going? Just to get your garden hose. Hose? Here, yeah, what are you doing? Fixing it so you can drive to the State Department. Great Scott, man, you ruin the motor with water. Just water, yes. Well, do you think I sprinkle my lawn with gasoline? Mr. Secretary, please, relax. I assure you I'm not harming your high-powered engine in any way. There. That ought to do it. There's the little beauty. So. Now for a moment to allow for the effervescence to distribute the chemical throughout the water. And then... You'll want to watch this, Mr. Secretary. I pump it to get some of it, some of my mixture up into the carburetor. Get in, Mr. Secretary. I'll have you at the State Department in three minutes. I'm a very careful driver, sir. Where did you get the gasoline, Mr. Secretary? Oh, from the garden hose. Naturally. Pardon, sir? Cancel the taxi cab. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Good Secretary. Good evening, Commander. Good evening, gentlemen. Secretary. Nice Secretary. to see you. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Charles Elton. Uh, Commander you, Phillips. Sir. How do you do? Colonel Willis. Yes. Mr. Garner. Hello. Each an expert in his own field. Mr. Elton, gentlemen, may very possibly have made the most important discovery since the development of the internal combustion engine. If he has what he appears to have, it would, to say the very least, accelerate the growth of world economy at an unprecedented rate and aid greatly in giving the Allied war machine complete and overwhelming superiority. Where is this uh, miracle, sir? Right here. I'm not surprised that you wonder, gentlemen. I could very well have been duped, but that's why we're here to find out. Is that the engine, Commander? Yes, sir. Now you're absolutely certain that the tank the tank is empty, and that it has never at any time contained any fuel whatsoever. Absolutely, sir. Good. Colonel, uh, did you get the water? Oh, yes, Mr. Secretary. But where did you get it? I picked it up at the corner grocery store, sir. Oh, fine. Now, uh, 
Is there a clean glass handy? Oh, yes. Right here. Good, thank you. Would you pour some water in here, please, Colonel? Colonel, have a drink. What's it taste like? Like water, sir. Just plain, ordinary water, nothing added? I'm sorry to say not, as far as I can tell. Uh, Mr. Garner. Just water? Um, Commander, how long to run an analysis on this? Half a minute. Good. Mr. Garner, is there anything at all unusual about this engine? No, it's just a plain automobile engine. Mm -hmm. uh, Commander? I can tell better after they sit a while, sir. But so far, it's just good old H2O. Fine. Well, Mr. Elton, the stage is yours. Thank you, sir. What are you doing? Just protecting myself, Mr. Secretary. Just enough to prime it and run the engine for about a minute. One provision, Mr. Secretary. Yes. You must permit me to consume every drop of the fuel. Well, sir, all the elements I use can be found on this planet. And perhaps some very clever chemist, after some hard work, might succeed in making an analysis. Then I would no longer have a secret, would I? And therefore nothing to sell. Yes, I see what you mean. Very well, you have my word. Well, gentlemen, someone can start the engine. Mr. Garner? But, Mr. Secretary, if you'll forgive me, there can only be one possible result. Water vapor and internal combustion engine are incompatible. You'll simply ruin a perfectly good engine. That is a risk that I feel we can afford. Very well. Gentlemen, what do you say? There's only one thing you can say. It's impossible. It completely defies the whole theory of internal combustion. Well, unless I'm dreaming, this will do everything you said it would. 
Unless we're all dreaming the same dream. Well, how much do you want for your formula? Ten million dollars. Uh, Mr. Garner, uh, you're employed in private industry. How much do you think he could get for this on the open market? Well, if it... What it seems to be... and can be produced cheaply... I guess there is no ceiling. That's a very good point. Uh, how much would it cost to produce this, uh, this marvelous pill of yours? For a pill that will convert... Ten gallons of water into ten gallons of high-grade fuel. Less than two cents. You uh, guarantee that? Make the deal contingent upon it. That's fair enough. I, of course, uh, can't commit our government to a, a project of this magnitude on my own responsibility, but... Well, I feel certain that we'll have no difficulty in getting what you want. Now, uh, if you wouldn't mind... Uh, just waiting in the other room for a moment. We, uh, uh, there are some things I'd like to discuss with you, gentlemen. Not at all. I'll be with you in a very few moments. Take your time, Mr. Secretary. Well, gentlemen, I, I am not an expert on these matters. I, I, I leave that to you, but I know I'd hate to present this matter to the president and have it explode in my face. Well, nobody's an expert on that stuff, uh, except your Mr. Elton. You took every possible precaution, sir. I know one thing, there was no drop of fuel of any kind in that engine until he poured his mixture in. Mr. Garner? You're a very cautious man. Would you care to express an opinion? Man enough to be a complete fool to believe what we just saw. But I believe it. There's no other choice. Well, gentlemen, that's good enough for me. Mr. Elton, I'm glad to... Mr. Elton? Mr. Elton! He's gone. And he was gone. He had completely vanished. The FBI and the Secret Service for many, many months searched for Charles Elton. They checked every hotel and rooming house in Washington. They interviewed every Charles Elton in America. They took his fingerprints from the laboratory and they checked them and compared them against every conceivable source. But not one shred of evidence was ever found to prove that such a man even existed. And of course, to this day, no one can even imagine how he managed to make gasoline from water. His secret, like the secret of the ghost who worked his magic in Chico, California, continues to elude our best scientific minds. We may never discover who these men were. Where are they?